some people don't have oppression. Some people have discomfort. They have judgment. Yeah. They're told that they're told their hair doesn't look nice. They're told their hair doesn't look beautiful. They're told their hair is not good enough. And that's a lot of um, people that are in the curly to wavy community. Um, but oftentimes, once you get to um, hair that's attached to a black person's body, yeah. especially if you start getting into well, let me just say attached to a black person's body. Yeah. Once that hair is attached to a black person's body, the um, level of racism that they can endure because of their hair, it can be amped up to a whole nother level. Okay, so this is like a debrief from a video we just did. Dr. Fo here again, Dr. Chima. <laughs> so we're going to talk about like some emotional, sociological aspects of hair and all that jazz. And what I was telling you was I need to work on like my confidence when it comes to discussing hair because for I get I get so emotional when I talk about hair. I get I get so emotional and it's like indescribable. It's like a mix of happiness, joy, sadness, um apprehension. It's just a lot of different emotions. I think the biggest apprehension for me is oh, don't do that. You make me cry. <laughs> I think, I think the biggest <laughs> apprehension for me is, um, will I be understood? And so that's why you were asking me, you said, uh, you were asking me like, what's my hair type? Yeah. And you know, like the Andre Walker hair typing system. And if you all aren't new here, I don't use the Andre Walker hair typing system, but, um, I've made sure to say, and I hope that it's been clear, but make, let me make sure to make it clear. Um, I, if other people need to use the Andre Walker hair typing system, then that's fine. You know, excuse me. Um, if that's your baseline for how you've learned about hair, then that's fine. Um, it has its problems. Yes. But my baseline for how I learned a lot of stuff about hair has its problems as well. And that is, I learned a lot from black girl curls, but it's not perfect. Um, so your baseline, I'm not going to judge anybody's baseline for how they learned about hair care, but you're asking me what's my hair type, and I was yeah. like, I don't, I don't use that. <laughs> I don't use it. And the reason why I don't use a hair typing system is because I'm always thinking to myself, will my experience be understood? Yeah. If I say a specific number, letter, category, will it explain my my experiences with my hair? Will it explain, will explain it thoroughly? And I feel like it won't. Um, you know, and I know some people say, well... If you just use the hair typing system correctly, well, for me personally, mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult to use it correctly for me um, because I feel like when you ask me, OK, so what's your hair type? I don't know where you learned about hair typing from. Yeah, it's like, you know, once again, you see all these videos and then like they show you hair strands and like how they curl up and like how they wave and everything. Mm -hmm. So my hair is like to be like, that's all that I knew about my hair. Mm -hmm. And then she was telling me how like that's not the best system but also even when i was thinking about my own hair as a person who knows nothing at all about hair care mm -hmm. honestly like yeah. i literally know nothing about it <laughs> you know something even, now we've talked about yeah it. now i mean i know so much now <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i'm basically an expert yeah <laughs> just kidding um but even then like i, I i'm always like okay is are you 2a 2b or 2c mm. you know like what are you so mm. it's kind of confusing like you know to just kind of like definitively describe it. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like that that system, has it helped you find people on the internet with hair like yours? No, not. I'm, oh, it hasn't? I mean, I, I haven't looked, honestly. Oh, you haven't looked. Yeah. Okay, you haven't looked. I know for some yeah. people that the hair typing system helps them find people with hair yeah. that looks like theirs. And so that's really important. And that's actually something I noticed yeah. with my with my dissertation study. Mm -hmm. So I did a, I did a study on... Um, black women's hair perspectives and I interviewed 15 black women um, from around the world that are currently located in the United States. I interviewed them and I asked them important questions about their hair perspectives, like their um, their hair in relation to their identity, their personal experiences with their hair, uh, growing up their experiences with their hair, their current experience with hair care and finances and all the other type of stuff. So I noticed with hair types, I noticed that for some people, they would use it to find people on the Internet. And other people on YouTube had already said that. And I put that in my lit review before I got to my participants. But, you know, also there was a lot of discussion about what hair types meant to participants. And it meant sometimes it meant the same things and sometimes it meant different things. And so based on that, how hair typing can mean different things 
you know, I was just like, okay, this is not something that I personally want to use for my hair. And I try not to use it for other people's hair. That doesn't mean that I don't see that you have wavy hair and I have coily hair. That doesn't mean that I don't see the difference. It just means that, you know, I want to get to know your story yeah. about your hair. And, you know, I want people to get to know my story about yeah. my hair. And also for us to be able to see similarities and differences yeah. and it be more based on things that are not rooted in things that are not necessarily well tested. So something yeah. more well tested was what we discru- uh, discussed earlier where we said yeah. that we both have high density hair. Yeah. So a lot of strands per square inch. We both have large hair strands, yeah. coarse hair strands, um, but we have different surface textures. Yeah. And your hair is more of a wavy, um, a loose wavy, and mine is more of a, a tight coily. Yeah. Not the tightest, but it's a tight coily. Um, so, yeah, we just talked about, like, hair typing and everything else. And, and you said that when you started to ask me about hair, you you can explain it in an academic way. But when you started, to, <laughs> when you started asking me about hair, how did you yeah. feel? Yeah, so I have known Fo for... I don't know. How Eight, years. nine years, maybe? Wow. Oh, no. I mean, okay, so that's, that's okay, six years, I think. Six, wow. seven years would be a perfect way because we took grad courses together. Like, Bo yeah. was getting our master's. I had just started my PhD. And in our first semester, we took a class together. That's how we became friends. And mm-hmm. I know at that time, like, he used to wear a lot of braids and, like, a lot of different styles, right, mm-hmm. which, like, looked amazing. But then, like, during that time, also, you started learning more about hair, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, after that, gradually, like, through the years that we have stayed in contact and talked to each other, I know, like, she has invested a lot of time and energy into learning more about her own hair and just, like, you know, hair in general as well. And I have, like, seen her go through all of that journey, right? Which can be a very difficult thing. Like, there are internal feuds with people. (laughs) Hair fights and, you know, like, whatnot. So when I was asking her that question, you know, first of all, I feel bad because I know she has worked really hard. Like, I was asking you, okay, like, what should I do with my hair? And, like, if I should do curly girl method and all of these things, right? So I like basically walk in here because I'm like, oh, I don't want to do the work, right? So it's like, give me everything that you have learned, <laughs> which like she was generous enough to do that. So, you know, thank you so much. And thank you for seeing uh, it as generous. We're going to yeah, get to that. Yeah. Definitely. But also, you know, because so much of our identity is associated with our hair, like the way I don't care about anything. Like I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm just like thinking about my hair because I have always had long hair and it is like such a big part of my personality. Like when I think about how I should look, this is the first thing that I'm thinking about. And that is the thing for the, for most people, right? Mm-hmm. And it's difficult to imagine to be in a position where like, this is the most defining trait of your personality. And then like you think like, okay, I'm going to go out and this is how people are going to perceive it, right? Mm-hmm. Like that can be a very difficult thing. Like, do you have the time, the energy, the resources to put into it to make it look like mm-hmm. how it should be accepted or like how you think people would accept it? And even if you do have the resources, then is your hair going to do all the things that people expect it to do, right? Mm -hmm. And that's out of your control. Mm -hmm. But once again, like that doesn't mean people are not going to expect anything from it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's a very emotionally taxing thing, you know? Yeah, it is is emotionally taxing to basically not have your hair um fulfill the standard which yeah. is being closer to straighter smoother looser hair yeah and so you know that experience is exacerbated for black people yes you know because our hair is considered the farthest away from the standard and even among black people there's a gradient where people's hair is the farthest away from the standard and yeah. there's no way they could without some sort of serious chemical treatment there's no way they can be in alignment with the standard yeah. For me, I can use two, typically three gels mm-hmm. <laughs> or three styling products, and I can achieve a look that is a little bit more socially acceptable, not fully socially acceptable yeah. because I'm still living in a black body yeah. and it's still tightly curled hair, yeah. but it's a little bit more acceptable. And, you know, um, Ikra can, her, she can style her hair, even when her hair is not styled, it's yeah. closer to the societal norm of smoother, straighter hair. But, you know, there are some black people that their hair never is or unless they have a serious chemical treatment, it's never going to fulfill the white supremacist standard of being smoother, um, looser, straighter. And so, you know, I think that that I think you 
Did you mention that that might have contributed to your apprehension about talking about hair with me? Yes. Um, that it did, you know, as you said, like, I can say it and, you know, it's I am very privileged to say that, that I have really, like, never cared for my hair, right? Mm. But it still looks better than a, a lot of people. Like, people put in a lot of work, right? And mm. then, like, I'm just, like, less naturally, okay, like, I have this hair. But then it has always been, I guess, like, nice to me. Mm-hmm. And when I, you know, like, go to someone and then I'm like, okay, I have this complaint about this thing that I basically don't have to work on. And you have mm-hmm. been, like, trying to learn about it so much. And but now help me solve this problem, which basically, you know, yeah. for a lot of people, like, they would look at this and they're like, this is not a problem, right? Oh, yeah. So, like, that also then, like, makes me apprehensive yeah. about asking these questions because, like, you know... I'm like, I look like a really shitty person asking this question in a way. No. I know you won't judge me, but, yeah. you know, like, yeah. I, I'm like, you know, I have, like, self-reflection enough, like, thankfully, to be able to, like, okay, you know, yeah, don't be that yeah. person. Because basically what you're saying is you're coming from a place of privilege when it comes yeah. to the way that your hair appears. Right. And, and, you know, like, as you said, it's like black hair, right? And then a lot of times when we talk about it, like, okay, like, I'm from South Asia, I'm Desi and all that. And then as... I have heard some people say, like, brown is hot, in a way. So Mm -hmm. this is, you know, like, this year, this is hot right now. And it's important for me to say that although people that are not black, their hair is often deemed more socially acceptable, that doesn't take away from the racism that other people of color face. That doesn't mean that their racism that they face is the same as black people, but people of color often still experience racism in white supremacist contexts, even if their hair is admired. Also, something that has to be considered is, is their hair admired or is their hair being fetishized? So this is something to consider. But unfortunately, when it comes to black people, our hair in a white supremacist context often is considered the least attractive, the least human-like, and the least valuable. But within a pro-black context, our hair is just as beautiful, just as valuable, and just as human. It is our norm and our standard. Mm-hmm. It wasn't at a time, maybe, mm-hmm. you know. That, so that's like another thing that contributes to it, how people mm-hmm. view the body that your hair is attached to it and mm-hmm. like the hair that comes with that. Yeah. So true, so true, because... Um, there are just so many levels to when it comes to how um, hair is perceived yeah. and people's experience with oppression when it comes to their hair. Some people don't have oppression. Some people have discomfort. They have judgment. Yeah. They're told that they're told their hair doesn't look nice. They're told their hair doesn't look beautiful. They're told their hair is not good enough. And that's a lot of um, people that are in the curly to wavy community. Um, but oftentimes, once you get to um, hair that's attached to a black person's body, yeah. especially if you start getting into well, let me just say attached to a black person's body. Yeah. Once that hair is attached to a black person's body, the um, level of racism that they can endure because of their hair, it can be amped up to a whole nother level, you know. So um, <laughs> there's there's that. But, you know, I really got into a lot of that stuff with my, um, with my dissertation and... Um, I want to tell you, don't feel like a crappy person <laughs> because no, I mean, don't feel like a crappy person for asking me questions yeah, about yeah. hair because I, like I said, I do need to improve my, my confidence with talking about mm-hmm. hair and, you know, cause, because I've had, you, like you said that, you know, a lot of your life, you haven't had to care about your hair yeah. and your hair has always been long and things like that. Well, for me, with my personal experience, I've, I've had to care about my hair since I realized my my own image yes um i would see people in media and i would think to myself their hair doesn't look like mine even you know the biracial women on tv i would think to myself oh their hair doesn't look like mine and so um there's that but thankfully i avoided a lot of bad experiences that some people have had with hairstylists because i realized that i didn't go to a lot of hairstylists as a child um i in the recent past i have had some traumatic experiences with stylists i think um I had some traumatic experiences. I've had some great experiences. I think the greatest experience that I've had with stylists in the recent past was um, finally, you know, uh, having someone listen to me and fully understand um, my hair texture. Like I explained, you know, it's coarse, strand size, and then, you know, it's medium to more cottony surface texture, having them understand my hair, you know. And um, listening to my concerns when it comes to styling and not judging me. And then um, also just 
tell my stylist, she told me she was like, um, my current curl artist, um, oh my god, Tysiana of Just Divine Curls. So she told me, she said, I don't care if you have to stand on one leg to style your hair. If you bring your hair in looking good the way it does, then I'm fine with it. And so, you know, she wasn't like harsh on about about what I was putting in my hair and things like that, as long as it made sense. Mm, yeah. So it's crazy how for, for me, those experiences yeah. are harder to, to have as a black woman. Yes. Um, so when it comes to hair, so uh, that contributes to like me being nervous and sometimes feeling like, oh, I need to be more confident when I discuss hair because there's so much that, you know, I've experienced when it comes to hair, not being the, not being the societal ideal. Yeah. You know, moving away from the the um, oppression aspect, I think it's also important for us us to discuss that um, that perfect hair, like that shiny, yeah. defined, whatever, it doesn't last like forever. Yeah, it's like momentary. Right, and it comes at a cost. <laughs> yes, a lot of work. Yes, um, um, for some people, and so you know, some people are not firmly situated in this social in this uh socially privileged yeah. hair state. They're not firmly yeah. situated. Um, so I think that some people have difficulty understanding that. Like for yeah. me, you know, I can style my hair with, you know, gels and things like that and it can stay defined for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually it's going to go back to what it wants to do the most, which is be an Afro. Yeah. Um, so there's just, there's, there's with hair, there's a lot to discuss. There's a lot to um, sometimes have some apprehension about I've shared with you all and I've been, you know, emotional on the channel, but, you know, I think something else that contributes to things and, you know, I think we've touched on it is that dissertation process. So going through the dissertation process is nothing nice. And then on top of that, I was listening to different black women's hair stories and they were sharing with me their triumphs, yeah. their, their nightmares being burned with, you know, hot cones being burned with chemicals to make their hair straighter or, you know, being told that their hair wasn't good enough, being berated for their hair texture and just, you know, or they were telling me, I finally learned how to style my hair. Yeah. My hair is finally easy to care for. Yeah. They were, um, a lot of them learn, not a lot of them, but some of them learn from hairstylists the same way that I did. Yeah. And they were able to break down hair care the way I was able to break mm. it down with you. Yeah. And so, you know, they just felt like a light bulb had been yeah. cut on. And so during my dissertation, talking about all that stuff on top of how rough that process is, like my dissertation is like 150 pages. Yeah. <laughs> and it takes years of work. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, going through that process and then having to you know, just do all this research about these historical, you know, things with white supremacy and mm -hmm. things like that. It really brought to the surface a lot of my own feelings yeah. about my hair. And so, you know, that's why I, on top of finishing the dissertation, I was like, let me take some time away from YouTube or yeah. whatever. But at the end of the day, I think that I'm so proud of myself. Yes, you should that be. Yes. <laughs> not only for finishing my dissertation, but also um, if you all haven't already watched part one also for getting to this place now where we can talk about hair yeah. and I can talk about, I can explain to you different things in a universal sense. Yeah. Like about how to shampoo, how to condition, yeah. how to do all those different things. That information is not new, but sometimes it can be really difficult to grasp because, yes. be because before we had that conversation, did you, you, did you know a lot? Oh, of I had, I knew nothing at all. Like yeah. all the things that for explain in the first video, yeah. I had no idea. And you are right. You know, like that other video that we watched in which the person was explaining, um, hair texture and then like how it looks on surface and everything. Like that was a little more technical because they're like, Oh, hair diameter and like this and that. Right. But then like, a common person like they're thinking of that and they're like okay what do you mean by like diameter like hair diameter and yeah. you know like all of that stuff so it, it is very important to just like explain it in a way where it is accessible to like general public yeah 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 and you know so that you know making information accessible to the general public when it comes to hair care i think that that is what a lot of um not i think I think thing. I'm a doctor now. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Based on my research, <laughs> I noticed that a lot of people, you know, they learned a lot of 
well, hair care information became more accessible to yeah. them as black women from black influencers. And so that was so important. And, you know, um, the people that, uh, well, one of the people that seemed to be the best situated when it came to her hair care information is because she learned from like long hair care form and places like that. But then the other others were having a little bit more difficulty, but at the end of the day, they still were really happy with learning from yeah. other black women even if, you know, the information didn't necessarily benefit them, you know. So there's that, but that accessibility piece, that is the work yes. that a lot of black hair influencers are doing. Yeah. And the fact that you didn't know a lot about a lot of that information about hair care, I don't think people realize how much a lot of black hair influencers actually know and how much further they are ahead yeah. Of everyone else when it comes to hair care information. Yes. Um, hair care is not common sense. Mm -hmm. It's not common sense. It's not hair care is not common sense. And then on top of that, to um, be a black person um, with hair that's not considered common, it makes it even more difficult for hair care to be common sense. So when it comes to discernment, when it comes to hair and stuff like that, that takes time for people of all races to develop. But there's yeah. an even more thick layer of yes. difficulty for black people that have experienced yes. so much misinformation about yeah. our hair mm -hmm. on top of oppression about when it comes to our hair. And so I think that's where a lot of, like I was able to talk to you and basically give you somewhat of a consult, that yeah. structure that I talked about, what Definitely. shampoo, what this, because I learned that stuff from hairstylists. I learned yeah. that stuff from like black girl curls. I learned yeah. stuff like that from working at Sally Beauty and places like that. So professional information can help make hair care more accessible. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that it's without problems, just like learning stuff from inf influencers can have its problems. Yeah. And so, you know, um, at this point, it's not about the information being perfect or anybody being perfect. Yeah. Now, I'm not I'm not. Let me let me let me say this. I, I'm not saying that anybody should be doing anything harmful. That's not what I'm saying. But at this point, you know. Hair care, there's something flawed to where people of different races don't know proper hair care and it's, it's difficult to access. But then on top of that, black people have a layer of we have to deal with racism on top of not having a full understanding about hair and the information not being as accessible. Yes. So, you know, you were saying that you appreciate the information <laughs> and, you know, I'm really grateful for that because I think a lot of people, yes. they've started to think that, you know, when it comes to the way that black hair influencers are talking about hair, they think it's just, they think it's just, you know, normal. They just, it is normal now, but I'm saying they think it's just run of the mill. It's not. It is still not normal in that way, right? Like I know nothing. And I have seen Faux go through years of work trying to understand, right? Like going to different curls, stylists, right? Everybody giving a different opinion and then like her doing her own research, talking to different people. So she has invested a lot of time and energy or like emotional, you know, financial, um, you have given a lot of time to doing this research in order yeah. to like learn about all of these things. And I, like, we are lucky people who are watching this video, they are lucky that they have access to this information, you know, yeah. for free. And they don't like, we don't have to put in years of for work free. for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, that's, that's why, that's why I made sure in my dissertation to, thoroughly discuss, you know, the impact of these yes. online hair communities, the, the impact of black hair influencers, as well as the impact of black hairstylists, whether, you know, sometimes there are, are great things and sometimes there are not so great things. And, you know, um, there's nuance. And I think a lot of times people think in a binary yeah. that either things have to be flat out good yeah. or bad or resources are either flat out good or bad. And I've I've been guilty of that because mm -hmm. uh, when I when I think about hair typing, I used to think of it as, oh, it's just so bad for me. It's just so bad for me. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not good for me. And, you know, I had a very visceral reaction to it. I still feel a little bit some type of way mm -hmm. about hair typing. I still I still do not li like it because, you know, like even during my research for my dissertation, I looked at um, I want to say how many different sources that I look at. I looked at Andre Walker's book. I read that book fully when he introduced hair typing, but I also read the Milady, the, the uh, section of the Milady, the latest cosmetology book, mm -hmm. their section about hair typing. And I also read um, 
I think her name is Michelle Breyer of Naturally Curly. I read her section on um, hair typing and all of them mm-hmm. gave different definitions yeah. of the different hair types. Yeah. So based on that type of stuff alone, I know that it's not for me, but at the end of the day, I know that it could be helpful to some people that are looking for representation yeah. and things like that. But, you know, so there's nuance there. There's, there's nuance. Yes. Um, but at the end of the day, um, us talking about this, you know, it's so important to maintain that understanding that yeah. hair is a difficult topic. Yeah, it is a difficult topic and you can always keep learning about it. Yeah, so that you can always, you know, nobody's word is final. Nobody, what did you just say? That nobody's word is final. Nobody's word is final. Okay. Yeah. Nobody's word is final. <laughs> and um, I'm learning how to really um, um, stand in that. And so in the channel, yeah. you all have seen my progression and my views. Yeah. Um, y'all see my progression in my views and I've done some other content where I've sat, where I've sat down and talked with other people with different hair routines and things like that. I think the biggest thing for me is, especially after going through that dissertation process, it really, I mean, like it emptied everything out of me, um, is to just stay true to the fact that, you know, hair is a difficult topic, but at the end of the day, it's important to empty hair care conversations of white supremacy and harm Mm -hmm. as much as I, as, as much as I can be a part of that. Um, and in a way that I feel comfortable, um, because like you said, what this education wasn't free. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) It was hard to learn. It was expensive. So I have to enter this space in a way that I feel comfortable. Um, but thank you all so much for watching another video. Thank you. No, thank Dr. you. Oh my God. For being She's so a amazing. doctor now. I know, right? I'm a doctor, you guys. <laughs> um, but thank you all for watching another video. And I will put some videos that may interest you up um, right after this one. So bye-bye. Bye.